There's something that isn't covered too often here on YouTube, and that's groove theory, or what some people call the bounce. I wanna show you how to harness those powers today. What's up guys, my name's Will, and if you've been here before, you probably know that I release music under the moniker Hush Child. But what may come as a surprise to some of you is that before I came here to YouTube, I spent about 10 years as a professional session drummer. So I feel pretty confident talking to you today about rhythmic theory. This video is of course sponsored by DistroKid and I'll be telling you a little bit more about them later on in the video. But for now, let's jump into it. Sound selection is key and it plays a major part in rhythmic structure. Here's some great sound selection, and it comes from the Counts Sample Pack Volume 3, but the groove is so rigid that it lacks any flavor or bounce that we're looking for. By the way, guys, when I'm speaking about bounce, I'm talking about the feeling that your audience gets when they hear your music. That separates your listeners from reacting like this, or reacting like this. Now with that in mind, here's some great rhythmic structure, but it lacks any conscious effort to choose the right sounds. With these sounds, I've just chosen them at random from Splice. Notice how they don't sound like they even came from the same studio or even the same universe. We Absolutely don't want that. So now what I'm gonna do is copy this exact same rhythmic structure, but with sounds from the first example. Right, that's a world of difference already. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what makes this groove so bouncy and so interesting, but make sure you don't go anywhere because later on I'm gonna talk about the melodic bounce, which you can add to your groove to accentuate just that head snapping feel. So there's kind of three main things that I wanna focus on outside of your sound selection and the rhythm you choose. And that's gonna be dynamics, space, and imperfection or alternatively humanization. So when I'm composing a beat, I obviously normally start with the kick drum. I turn my metronome on and that's gonna be kind of a placeholder for my hi-hat or my other rhythmic elements. So here I've got two consecutive downbeats on the quarter note margin. And then I've got this quiet dynamic here. And you can see that it plays almost a 16th before the next downbeat, but I've just adjusted it to play just a little bit later. It's not too noticeable, but this all goes into my third point, which will be imperfection or humanization. We've got a third downbeat here, and because my metronome is playing simultaneously, I know that I need to fill this space with something later on, if not my kick drum. So to generate some interest, I've moved my kick drum 1 16th to the right. Again, I wanna create some kind of space within my track. There's a lot of busyness happening in these first four quarter notes. So I'm gonna deactivate my kick drum that was appearing on this downbeat. That gives the listener a rest from all of that busyness. So a little bit busier, more interesting towards the end of the loop. So the main thing that's gonna generate my bounce is going to be my hi-hat. I've chopped up that clip that we heard at the beginning. It's got lots of dynamics in there and I'm making sure that I'm also double clicking on this clip, going to warp beats, the forward marker, and then bringing that down. It's going to measure the transients and it's going to make your clip sound a lot more staccato or a little bit more reverbious. So I use this as some kind of dynamic automation there. I have to mention as well that I've got some rhythmic processing on here. I've obviously made sure to EQ out any low rumbles in my hi-hat. I also made sure to add a little side chain compression to my kick drum, which is just ducking the hi-hat by about four dB when that kick plays. 
And I've also added Cable Guy's Shaper Box on here as well. And that again, just ducks the volume by about 72% on the quarter note downbeat. So again, that's adding some of that bounce feeling that we're getting there. I coupled this with some percussive elements. And then of course, the easiest way to replace my metronome and have a solid downbeat marker is to add our snare or our claps. I've also made sure to accent the first and third hits with some tambourine and clap one shots. Also, if you zoom in on these elements, you'll notice that I've manually dragged back some of the beats. There's humanization there. Something I don't want to overlook as well is in the bottom right of Ableton, you have this delay button. And that allows you to add milliseconds of delay to the samples or MIDI that you pull in. And I made sure that on my tambourine, we're delaying this by quite a bit. That means that by 25 milliseconds, this tambourine is gonna be behind the metronome. The open hi-hat is four milliseconds. The closed hi-hat is nine milliseconds. This clap and tambourine is sitting minus three milliseconds ahead of the metronome, nine here and minus five. So again, that creates some humanization. If these were percussion players all within the same room, all looking at each other, they wouldn't be completely quantized together. That's what I'm trying to create here. So there's a little bit about dynamics and humanization. The other thing that I mentioned was space. So you may have also heard this as tension and release. Anytime I have something particularly busy going on, I try and create a little breath of fresh air. It also allows me to feed in my melodic sections more easily to my rhythm as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about melodic bounce. If this is new to you guys, don't worry if you feel overwhelmed. When I started doing this, I was super overwhelmed. So you can only imagine how lost I was when it came to actually releasing my music, which is why I wanna to speak to you quickly about today's sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid makes it so easy to release your music on all of the music platforms. Now think about that. That's everything from Spotify and Apple Music, which you've probably already thought of, to platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and even Snapchat. It's so important to make sure that your music is available everywhere and anywhere. And that's why I can't fathom how difficult it would be to do that in this day and age without DistroKid. So if you wanna start releasing your music on DistroKid and get a 7% discount off your first year, then use the description in the link, no, <laughs> then use the link in the description below. So coming back to creating a rhythmic bounce, we've got this great groove here that has both interest and space. It's got a great sound. The rhythm as a whole feels nice. But of course, we want to accentuate that with a melodic pattern as well. So when I come down here, I've got three kind of melodic parts. I've got my 808s, I've got a pad, and I've got some kalimbas as well. Let's actually start there because now that you guys know I come from a drumming background, it should be no surprise that I play a lot of my melodies rhythmically. So with my kalimbas, I've made sure again, sound selection is key. I've chose some different kalimba sounds. They're also panned differently and they have different dynamic values as well. This first kalimba plays a syncopated pattern. And what I mean by that is it's playing the same time signature and BPM as my drums, but it's playing a completely separate rhythm. And it plays alongside this other kalimba pattern. And that just kind of accentuates some of the accents. And this little kalimba that's panned to the left dominates the dynamic range, but plays very sporadically. And it'll probably be quite easy to pick out this last sound within the drum groove as well, because I've purposely chose the spaces within that drum rhythm. So we've generated some rhythm there, we've generated some interest. Well, how about creating a bounce? A really easy way to do that would be to get a pad. And I've just used my friend Dokodo's new sample pack. It's also free, so I'll leave it in the description. What we could do with this pad is just essentially add a, a sidechain compressor, which is linked to my kick drum. And that's just gonna duck anytime the kick drum is played. 
So it's a really simplistic way to do it and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think why not generate some more interest around everything else that you have going on. So you see that I've got some different tracks here. This top group is just some processing to make my pad sound a little bit nicer. Now it's on three different tracks because this top track has the auto pan and it has some stereo width. These two tracks are panned hard left and hard right. So at these two points in the loop, you're going to hear them a lot wider than you did previously. And this bottom one has reverb on it. If you're wondering how I got those pitched effects from one long pad drone, I'm just essentially clicking on those clips one by one and then just pitching them an octave down or five semitones up. So I've just pitched them within the key of my song, which is E minor. So if I play that with the drum rhythm, this is what we get. So now I really like it, it's kind of bonobo-y, it has a lot of bounce there, it has a lot of interest, but it's still rhythmic. And then I need to add some kind of bass. You could just have the 808 play on the first downbeat of the kick, but it's done time and time again and isn't that interesting. So why not start with some space on that first kick drum, have a little pitch bend, and then we can go into the busyness of our bass here. Now the one final point to remember is that you can't really do that loop after loop after loop. It would get a little bit boring. So I tried to make sure that there's simplistic rhythmic elements and some surprising moments as well. It's all about tension and release, which we spoke about at the beginning. So here's something I prepared earlier and an example of what you could do in a longer phrase. So we've got our basic loop here. If we wanted to loop that two times, we could just select some seemingly random fills that are in keeping with the tone of our track and delete the music or mute the music at those points. So I'm gonna get rid of everything that occurs here. I'm just gonna hit zero to deactivate that clip. And we're gonna pretend that this is a brand new loop. So there's some surprising elements there. You've already got some knowledge of what the overall structure of the song is. If we went into a new section, well, maybe we wanted to take away some elements. You can see here that I've lost the clap, which if you remember was kind of our metronome marker for where we sit in the track. That would mean replacing that with something else. And as you can see here, I've just made my kick drum more straight. So now it's landing on each of the downbeats. This adds some tension. You could loop that up for a while, add that to a riser, some white noise, a reverse crash, go into a hit, and you can join the loop that we've been constructing throughout this video. I hope this was helpful in providing some knowledge on groove theory, guys, and I hope you have some better idea of what a bounce is, what it sounds like, and maybe how to create one of your own. If you do create something particularly tasty, make sure that you join the Discord in the description below and drop us a flavor of your own style. We also do a bi-weekly beat battle, normally with some prizes, and we have a really helpful community grow in there as well. If this has been a helpful video, I urge you guys to like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel and shows the algorithm that this is a video that other people from the community should enjoy. As always guys, I thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see in future and I'll see you next time.